Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek, their favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. In this week's podcast, we've got a guest that's going to help us live a richer life by design. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, you know him, you love him, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great because I got my mic to work. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, uh, the, on the last podcast, it didn't work and now it's working again. I guess you, uh, were able to figure out the Mac problem. It wasn't a Mac problem. It was a Mark problem, but good close. try. I mean, close, like M A. <laughs> yeah. Close, close. Well, our guest today is Jonathan Kruger from lionsgateadvisors.com. Jonathan is a wealth advisor and he helps uh, high net worth uh, individuals and families um, live a richer life by design. Uh, minimize taxes. Uh, Jonathan, you, you probably do a better job than I would. W what, how do you help people? Mark, thanks for having me on the show. And Scott, uh, great to meet you both. You know, Mark, we have really focused on how we can be kind of the quarterback for our clients and their investments uh, and help them convert income or tax liabilities into income producing assets. And so that's what we do on the wealth management side. But from a day-to-day -day basis, what it really is about is peace of mind and our clients be able to have a well-written plan on how to accomplish those goals. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, my first question is what's some of the worst advice you see or hear given in wealth management? Well, Mark, for, as you guys are probably saying, it's kind of like most people have gone through the twilight zone when it comes to being a financial advisor. They've all heard the same story. And so that's what they preach you know, uh, buy and hold, and they don't have a plan on when to tell people to get out or how to be able to have passive income, right? So it's all in the hope of something depreciating. And then they don't look at what the fees and expenses or the tax implications are. And so oftentimes some of the worst advice that we see is what's most traditionally taught, but two financial advisors, how to work with the clients. All right. Great. Great. Um, so tell us a little bit about the podcast. And, and how to live a, a richer life by design? Well, we, Mark, we, that's a great question. And one I hadn't been asked about before uh, recently, we had started living a richer life by design out of response to how to be able to pass on this information about cr wealth creation and management and passing down the uh, values that our families had and their family offices that they wanted to instill in the next generation. And so we started looking at um, conversation pieces about what happens when your parents have to go to hospice or we have to start taking a look at long-term care or what if we need to be able to what do we talk about health and fitness and realizing that living a richer life by design is about being intentional about those conversations that you're having and then looking to um, really be educated and be able to have those discussion points around the kitchen table you know it's you can have all the money that you want or have a lack of money and still be in the same position of having to have the heart-to-heart -heart conversations that deal with real life issues. And we we're hoping that this would help families through the testimony of others that have experienced it or have gone ahead in their own lives, be able to share how to be able to help navigate that change in their own. Very nice. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, it's, um, I, I mean, it's an interesting concept, right? It's something that a lot of people don't really think about. Okay. Like a lot of people just, they, they might do some setup of their own, you know, and what I mean by that is they might go and, um, and um, you know, do, do some estate planning on their own, but how many times do people really have that conversation with the next generation, right? It's, it's the, not only the wealth transfer component, but also the knowledge transfer too. And I think that that's one of the things that a lot of people just miss is, okay, that's, it's all fine and dandy that you've gone out and you've, uh, you know, got your, your cemetery plots done and, uh, you know, you got this estate set up, but what, what about knowledge transfer? That's a big component. No, it's so true. Like, I, I mean, I think I'm different because I'm obsessed with my mortality and I think about it like every day. 
And I always think about, is this the last whatever that I'm doing? And what if it is? Am I really present or really enjoying it? Did I, did I lose you? Can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I think S Scott got frozen. Anyways, so I'm, I'm a little bit different in that way, Jonathan, but like when I talk about this with my family, they don't want to hear it. They don't, it's too morbid for them. Yeah. So I have a Dropbox folder in, in case of death yeah. and I've got the knowledge transfer and I always uh, actually have um, just, here's what we do. To, to settle the estate. These are the attorneys, the CPAs, the key people to, to do all of this. So, yeah. you know, is, is this something that, how do you help people navigate these very difficult conversations when for most people that like their own mortality is, is such a difficult topic to even address? You know, Mark, I'm going through this right now, personally. Um, we've, we've dealt with it with our clients and are the members of a firm for years, but it's something different when you go through it with your own family. My, my mom has been battling cancer for the last five years, and uh, really we found uh, one great um, unit after another of medical professionals that could help her be able to overcome her battle, and then she has some great success, but she's just at that final stage of her life where her body is giving up even though her heart and mind still want to be present, and we've talked a lot about this because, you know, when you have to put ruts where the rubber meets the road, and you have to have uh, these hard conversations. Everyone has a different opinion of what that looks like. And not everyone is emotionally at the same place to be able to discuss them. And so it has really meant being able to bring my brothers and sisters along in those conversations and vice versa for where's mom today. And being open with my dad, who's been the caregiver and had other caregivers come to support to her during this transition. And we've talked a lot about what are those, you know, through all these interviews I've had with our guests as well as with our clients, I uh, started asking, what are those questions that we're not passing on, that we had forgotten to ask or we hadn't paid attention to through all the traditions that we've built over the years and the times that we've had with family? And so we've, we've talked a lot about a heritage day. <laughs> and what are those things we want to tell the stories about how our own families were overcomers and how they lived out their faith and what did that mean for them? And then to allow that each one day each year to be something just like watching old family movies. Like, I don't know if anyone does that anymore. I grew up doing that. Well, dad had the old eight millimeter uh, film camera, right? And pulled that up and we'd watch it forward and backward and had a lot of fun. But taking the time to intentionally do that at, one, at least once a year, to tell about those stories, to re remember where we came from and to be able to recall some of those things that we've intentionally done or what things had we learned over the year um, to value the human capital, right? Oftentimes when we think of investment capital, we think about money, but the human capital is our relational and then the intellectual capital is what we've learned and what we can contribute. And no one has, not everyone has to have the same experiences, but they've all learned something that they can bring to the table that we can be aware of. And we just get to missing it. We miss the opportunity to value each other for where we're at in life, but also for those accomplishments throughout the year, through the years. And uh, we're being intentional about that is one place to start. Yeah, I love it. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? You know, Mark, I, I do a lot with video, right? I do a lot with video for flight school. Every, every flight school session is recorded. And the one thing that I do every time I'm teaching flight school is I, I think about like, okay, if this was the last time I taught flight school because of my mortality, this is the last time I taught flight school, could my family take my knowledge that I share in flight school, could they take that and watch it and then, and then go with it, right? And you know, I think that that's, to, to me, that's one of the driving factors behind even me doing flight school is it's, it's, I'm always documenting my business right then and there. And I think that with technology today, like you know, the video and, and how easy it is to just get on a Zoom call and record it, you don't have to have a lot of technology and, and you know, you can share your knowledge even with younger children, almost like what the guy from the last lecture did, right? You know, he, he went and he shared his, his he, he, he memorized or memor memorialized his thoughts and his, his values and everything that's there that he could pass on. And it's just not used for his family. It's you, I mean, you use part of it in, in boot camp, for example. 
So, you know, there's a great opportunity in today's environment with even with the technology that we have, your voice can be left for a long time. Your image can be left. Uh, you know, I think it, I mean, I've never done this, but heck, maybe I should go back to one of the first flight school videos and, and even look at how I've changed, how I've changed and how I present it has changed, right? Like you can see an evolution over time thanks right. to technology. And I, it's kind of cool what Jonathan's doing too. Yeah, I mean, it really isn't. And Jonathan, I don't, I don't want this to be too personal, but it, it is a very personal question for you. Um, if you were on your deathbed, what words of advice would you leave for your family and friends sitting by your bedside? Well, and Mark, because this is very recent and really a, a heart issue for me because of where my mom's at, um, I was just out there a couple weeks ago. I live in St. Louis and she's in Colorado. And so I was out visiting them because um, of her stage in life and, and nearing this transition of death. And uh, we really, I believe in uh, an everlasting life when you have a relationship with Christ. And so my perspective and faith is based on that for how I live out my life. And so one, I'd hope that my testimony uh, and just the pursuit of faith of living that out is what's passed on to my kids. And I was uh, just meditating on, in my time meditation this morning. I was, I was thinking about that. Hey, what is, what is going to be left to my children and how do I preserve that um, for the faith stories of what was it that God did in my life? That's a personal testimony. That others can't say that didn't happen because I, I was there. I experienced it. I'm a changed person because of that. And for my mom, I had to ask her what are those questions that she wanted me to be able to pass on to our kids. And that was her own, right? Share the faith. Share the story of, of God's faithfulness in our lives. So that's one of the first things is really um, – be able to be consistent about holding those things that are nearest and dearest to your heart to be able to pass that on. I think living that out each day, you know, how does, how is it designed that, you know, our children are given to us as a blessing, right? As a gift. So how do we reflect uh, that desire that God has for them in their life? As are we uh, an image of that for what it is that's the best in design for being that role figure uh, or to be that father figure um, in their lives? And I'm challenged with that uh, each day being pressed into how can I make sure that the little time that I have with them each day matters and builds into them feeling loved, feeling accepted, or, or being uh, built up and edified. And I'd hope that by being intentional in that matter now as they're young, because I've got a, my daughter will be turning four here in June. Uh, my son is two and a half and we're expecting her a third. So we've got a young family. Yeah, that's great. You're, you're, you're in the middle of it. So <laughs> Sure. Um, Scott, Scott and I have teenagers and, well, you've um, arrived at that. <laughs> barely, barely, barely. I mean, I, Mark, maybe we shouldn't be saying that because you know, like, I think everybody's got to go through the process on their own. So yeah, that's true. Okay. Sure. So that leads me to the next question, Jonathan Kruger, considering that you're dealing with people that we would just consider conventionally wealthy. These are people with a million and a half dollars and more of net worth. And, you know, when we look at the savings rate of the United States, I forget what the, the number is, but it's a very high number of people are just living month to month. So right. you're really working with the top 1% in the United States. Yeah. So given your perspective, what do you think of when you hear the word successful? Well, Mark and Scott, you guys, I think, uh, would agree, based off of me listening to some of your other podcasts, that success to me isn't always about money, right? Um, people can live lives that they build in, that they're successful in, based off of what they had planned to achieve or their merit of impact and influence. And so, really, when I think of success, it's just not a monetary. Um, we've seen families inherit millions of dollars and spend it in a year and a half, Right. They have their summer, what's called the summer of fun, and they're done, and they're back to their baseline of what normalcy is, right? And so oftentimes, success isn't about the level of wealth that you have. It, it may be the how you accelerate your impact, and it allows you to accelerate your impact further in a lot of cases, but success is uh, how do you live a life of abundantly and then be able to have an impact that you know uh, that you can feel at peace with, and I think that's where you have true success 
uh, when you know you've been be able to pour out your lives to others to be able to help other people get better as well. Yeah, I mean, Scott Todd, by that definition, you are a success. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, you know, I think that everybody's got to decide on their own how they define success, but, you know, it's, that's valid. That's a valid point. Well, I mean, that kind of brings us to the point of uh, today's sponsor, which is Flight School. So learn how the next 16 weeks of your life can literally be transformed by none other than your land geek Sherpa, Scott Todd, taking you up that mountain of land investing so that one day you can wake up and your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses. You're working because you want to, not because you have to, and work up that Maslow's hierarchy of needs into self-actualization. And it's only 16 weeks. So how do you learn more? Go to the landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with the Zen master Mike Zeno or the nightcap OG dude buddy, Scott Bossman, and learn more. So Jonathan Kruger, um, what do you believe is normal or wise or cool that other people think is crazy? <laughs> that other people think is crazy? Uh, that's, a, yeah. that's a great question. I haven't, um, you know, thinking through what's wise or cool, um, to swim against the grain, to swim upstream, or to go against the grain, I think is cool. To be, to want to be able to see a change, or to be a participate in making a change in life, and make a statement, I think is cool. You know, when you think of a lot of the millionaires and those that have created wealth for themselves, it's because they didn't accept mediocrity. You know, they didn't just age in place, right? I think we're currently in the COVID nineteen year of twenty twenty, and we've got this um, shelter in place. Uh, that's been upon most Americans. And, you know, you're, if you do nothing, you're just aging in place. You're not becoming better. You're not growing in your pursuit of a dream. And you're just kind of accepting the uh, status quo. And so oftentimes it's about that slight edge that you uh, choose to do little things on a daily basis that allow for you to be able to uh, become greater over long periods of time. And that can be in personal development. It can be in your financial wealth, uh, you know, listening to your own testimonies. Uh, Mark of people that uh, are on your website, you know, they wish they had started earlier with your program. You know, they didn't wish they had started later. They're like, we sat on this for a year. I wish we'd gotten started and got going on this right away. You know, you guys have learned so much. Why not apply that knowledge rather than having to uh, learn it the, uh, through hard knocks? And I think what's cool is when you have, you're able to position yourself and, uh, and post yourself that you're planting a flag and you're making a decision to do something uh, that will bring that whatever you qualify as success in your own life so you can achieve it. All right. Fantastic. I don't, I don't know if other people would think that's crazy, Jonathan. Well, you think, that's so here's, I interviewed jo, uh, Jason Caldwell um, a couple of weeks ago and, and Jason uh, rode, uh, he like a road rowing uh, on a boat. He rode it with four of the guys across the Atlantic from uh, and and uh, into the into the Caribbean islands, so he was on. There's a race literally uh, that they do every year or every couple of years across the Atlantic. And now he's planning on one in June, I think, to go from California out to Hawaii. Now they're physically rowing a boat, right, ac across the ocean to aim for an island in the middle of. The, and if they miss it, you know, you're you got you thank God for you know, all the systems we have to make sure you're on track. But there's a lot there. I think in my mind, not everyone's going to think that's crazy because they love to row. They love to get out there. But for me, who's not a rower, that's crazy. I'm like, man, God bless them. Go for it. That's not something I personally want to be able to um, throw my life endeavor to. But I love those stories about guys that are leaders that are willing to be able to push against, uh, to fight uh, against all obstacles to overcome challenges. And um, most people may not think that's crazy, but it's not common. All right. Fair enough. So we're at that point now at the podcast, Jonathan, where we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? There's three things. Um, one, most wealth is accumulated through real estate 
at least one third of the portfolio is real estate or passive real estate. Another is looking at alternative investments with uh, late stage venture capital. And another is in actual life insurance. And I know that you've, you've interviewed other professionals in these areas. And those are the three that I see consistently. Very little is actually made in the stock market unless you have algorithms to know, know when to get out and when to get back in. And we work with some of those professionals, but many people don't have access to them. Those are the ways to create wealth. And so when you think about wealth creation, you've got to have a team that can be able to help you navigate that change and look for those opportunities. The second is when you're running a business, Mike Markowski wrote a book. Um, is it Markowski or Michalowicz? Michalowicz. Uh, the Profit First. And Mike Michalowicz, uh, you've probably interviewed him. Have you interviewed Mark? Before? Twice. Yeah. Yeah, so have I. And, and just absolutely love his book. We put into practice Profit First years ago. And it's been amazing how much time, how many times it's come in to play to help us navigate change in economic cycles. And uh, to continue to do that, that's a, that'd be the, the second thing really to be able to know. You've got to be able to have that cash balance uh, of how you manage money in your business so you can take advantage of the opportunities as they come along. And third is David McKnight wrote a book called The Power of Zero. And he had interviewed um, former general comptroller Dave Walker on the upcoming uh, tsunami uh, of debt that's coming up on the country that we're going to have to pay for. And it's called unfunded liabilities. Most people don't talk about it. We're only familiar with the national debt. But it's all the uh, IOUs that are pushed out for our country to have to pay for it, especially so we have an aging population that needs Medicare and Social Security and all those things. Those are the IOUs that uh, we will have to bear the burden as the younger generation of the working population of America. Under, at the time, we've got the greatest history of debt increase uh, ever, right? With all the bailouts and everything, the quantitative easing that's gone on. So understanding that if you have investments that have been tax deferred, we are at a unique opportunity to convert those um, assets and Roth IRA, into, from IRAs to Roth IRAs or um, into life insurance strategies that allow for you to grow your funds tax-free and tax-exempt when the taxes are currently at a discount. So if you haven't read that book, The Power of Zero, I'd highly recommend it. I think you'd be well impressed uh, as well as watch this do documentary called the, Ta the Power of Zero, The Tax Train is Coming, which is available on our website. All right, fantastic. Scott Todd, what's your the, tip of the week? The tax train is coming, man. That's right. <laughs> hey, listen, Mark, if I told you about an app called Donut, what do you think it is? Well, I, I, because I know you so well, I know what it is. Jonathan, you know, is Scott it? Todd, as felt as he is, has to eat a donut every single morning from well, Wawa. Looks like it looks like he's pretty fit, so I don't, I don't know. He must run a lot in order to be able to burn that off. No, I don't run. I just, I toler, uh, uh, I pace it out, right? Like it's just, <laughs> it's, it's to me, it's about the calories. But Mark, you're wrong. Okay, donut dot. Check it out. Now, look, I know you're not a big fan of Bitcoin. I think that there could be something there in the future. I don't know. It's like one of those things you just don't know. And do you want John, to be? Well, let's but, let's ask uh, Jonathan. Are you, saying, are you saying Mark's not a fan of Bitcoin? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you? Jonathan, are you? So, yeah, I had I had lived in Russia during 1993 through 96 during the perestroika when the ruble went from uh, 50 rubles to the U.S. dollar to 5,000 rubles to the U.S. dollar. And w listen, we've been on this track with this trajectory as a nation, as a world, to come to this point where they're going to have to go through a global reset of the economies and also the monetary structure. I think Bitcoin was just the first test about how, what that would look like to go to a digital currency. So you think Bitcoin is coming? Yes, sir. To be, well, you know, it's, it's Either interesting Bitcoin because- Bitcoin itself or something like it. Uh, you know, Ray Dalio talks about the long-term debt cycle and how we're just gonna have to eliminate everyone's debt and start over. Um, it happened in World War II, 1945. Happens what, every 50 to 75 years, it's a once in a lifetime event we're there um so something's going to change yeah for sure well, well ray dalio is one of my favorite another is um mark markowski with bulls and bears uh dot com uh, he's got some great uh, understanding of what this happened with the history um and the history of economics 
and so what unique opportunity we're in today. And we, could this happen, a total reset? I think it's going to have to uh, at some point or another. It just depends on where your currency is available and uh, whether or not you're able to convert it to make it more useful. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. This is why we have real assets like land. So, so this is why my tip of the week is really good. Ready? Donut.app. You go there, you connect your bank account to it, and it looks for the spare change, right? You go, you go get, I don't know, a Starbucks for five twenty-five. It sees that there's seventy-five cents of spare change mark. It takes that seventy-five cents and it buys some Bitcoin. Boom, buys it. Take your spare change, dabble a little bit if you want to. It's a safe way of doing it. Don't worry about the price. Just keep buying it over time. It'll all work out or it won't. And then you just stop it. But you tried something. It didn't cost you an arm and leg. If you, are you doing this? If you're doing it, I'm going to do it. It's donut.app. Is that right? Donut.app. Like, why wouldn't you try it? Donut.app. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm in. Yeah. Check it out. So does it, does it uh, Scott, does it hook up directly to your um, smart app or to your uh, smart wallet? It's, it's, um, so what it does is you connect to your bank account. Okay. And then you automate with rules. So you can say, Hey, round up to round up change or round up to the nearest five or 10, whatever. And then you can pick the asset. You can go in Bitcoin or you can also go into savings accounts, et cetera. You can cash out when you want, but it's, it's automated way of just taking every single transaction where you have some change and just rolling it over to Bitcoin or or to a savings account. There so you if, you're li- if you're listening to this podcast right now and you're downloading the app, as you start going through it, it says referred by a friend. So since Scott Todd referred us to it, let's put in his handle. He's going to get 10 bucks for the referral. Like even Scott Todd could use an extra 10 bucks in Bitcoin. Um, Scott, what's your handle? So like you can get the 10 bucks. Okay. Uh, can, we, can we put it in the show notes? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, so we'll, we'll do that. So I'm going to skip that for now. And um, fantastic. So my tip of the week is learn more about Jonathan Kruger and how he can make you even wealthier. All you have to do is go to Lions, lionsgateadvisors.com. We'll have a, we'll have a uh, link to it, lionsgateadvisors.com. Check out the podcast, Living a Richer Life by Design. And um, I want to just thank the listeners and remind them the only way, the only way we're going to quality of guests like a Jonathan Kruger is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less. So please do that. Jonathan, are we good? We're good. Thank you very much. Scott, Marcus. are we good? We're good, Mark. Yeah, our pleasure. All right, let's do this, Scott Todd. One, two, three. Let freedom ring. Jonathan's like, oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, if you I let me know that was going to be the case, I'd do it with you. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. All right, thanks, everybody. <laughs>